friends welcome back to the canada info hub channel it's me wolo i live in winnipeg manitoba canada and i love to talk about life in canada and immigrating to canada so the whole of last week has been very very busy and um i was supposed to come on live i was supposed to schedule a date to come on live but you plan things and they don't go according to plan and that's what life is about sometimes so you just like tell yourself okay there has to be another time and i am happy to announce that by god's grace this saturday i'll be coming on live so all the questions that you have just keep them till saturday don't send me emails all the questions that you have keep them to saturday and i'll come on live and try as much as possible to answer those questions when you join me live so if you're new to this channel i would say thank you and welcome to this channel and just ask you to subscribe to the channel give me thumbs up yes i need those thumbs up i usually say destroy the like button but i'm not saying that again so give me the thumbs up and check all the videos yes i've done so many videos um videos that will benefit you if you fall within a certain age bracket um videos that will benefit you if you want to immigrate um using the different options the rural and other immigration pilot i've done a video on that several videos on that not even one the aipp i have done several videos on that the provincial nomination programs i have actually done several videos on that um what else um express entry i've done a video on that um you know different all the ways of immigrating except for the startup visa the startup visa and um um owner operator um it, it, owner operator way of immigrating i've actually not done a video on those two options of immigration but most of the options of immigration i've actually done several videos on that is it caregiver i've done so which one again <laughs> i've done several videos on immigrating to canada anyway today's video is actually concerning immigration and the options that are available to different people based on their peculiar situation you know there are no two immigration journeys that are the same no no two of them are the same each person is unique and each pathway is unique and each pathway is different now the thing is most people do not actually um, assess themselves properly and um, you know know the options that will be favorable for them or suitable for them and they just follow this bandwagon um, you know way of doing things like oh everybody is doing express entry and then they jump into express entry everybody is doing this and they jump into it without really asking themselves if it's going to be successful or not the truth is not everybody can come to canada that's the truth some people most people can come to canada but not everybody will be able to successfully immigrate to canada because there are different um how will i put it now different phases that you have to go through before you eventually get the visa and i actually want to discuss about the options that are available for people who want to immigrate the first option is to come through the normal express entry the federal skilled worker program and i've talked about it before that it favors people who are within the age bracket of 19 to 29 but it can still favor people above that age bracket especially if they have the highest language score if they have a phd degree and they have a um french language score as well so if you know you want to immigrate through the federal skilled worker express entry you should at least if you don't fall within the age bracket of 19 to 29 then know that you must at least have a master's degree or a phd and have the highest language score which is ielts and have the highest french language scores as well so if you combine all of these then you know that you can come in through the federal skilled workers program express entry processing time is six months now for federal skills trades it's actually different because it's quite difficult and they draw normally once or twice a year not like the federal skilled workers that it is drawn every month and the canada experience class that they give um invitations to every month so for the canadian experience class basically people who have one year work experience in canada under a certain knock code knock zero a and b if they have one year work experience then they can apply under the canadian experience class and it's still the same express entry it's still the same scores although the scores have been lower during this period because of covid19 
so basically federal skilled workers program the federal skilled trades and the um, canadian experience class these three programs are usually under the express entry but you have some provincial nomination programs that are actually um given through express entry i mentioned ontario before which they are trying to change now and alberta and nova scotia ontario alberta nova scotia these three provinces they actually give people um, notifications of interest for a provincial nomination through the express entry so the thing is um did i talk about federal skill trades okay let me talk about federal skill trades now for federal skill trades you need either a certificate of qualification or work experience and to get that certificate of qualification itself is very difficult that's the truth because for you to get it you have to come to canada to get a certificate of qualification you have to challenge the trades exams like trades in plumbing electrician um welding you know those trades those trades occupations you have to challenge the exam and get the certificate of qualification before you can apply under the federal skilled trades alternatively you have to get a job so if you either it's either you get a certificate of qualification or you get a job and you and i know that getting a job from outside canada even for these trades is very difficult because they are usually regulated occupations yes they are usually regulated occupations under the federal skilled trades um pathway so that's for express entry now the other options are the provincial nomination program options which i've talked about several times i've talked about manitoba i've talked about saskatchewan i've talked about ontario i've talked about british columbia unfortunately british columbia it's only favorable to people who are living in bc in the sense that they have to you know you must get a job offer for you to be eligible for a provincial nomination except people who schooled in bc maybe they did their master's degree or a phd in certain programs those ones are eligible to apply for a pnp without getting a job offer but generally all anything related to getting a provincial nomination from british columbia has to do with getting a job offer first now that's for provincial nomination i think i i also talked about um some of the atlantic provinces provincial nominations as well although it was under aipp but anyway Prince Edward Island is very difficult getting a provincial nomination from Prince Edward Island. I don't know. It's like they are very stingy with them. Their, their own PNP. Um, Nova Scotia, they get it through express entry. So I've talked about it before. Um, New Brunswick, they usually go for recruitment events around the world. And I've talked about it on this channel as well. Normally when they even announce their recruitment events, I usually do a video about it and tell you where the recruitment event will take place and some people from this channel they were lucky to get job offers by attending those recruitment events and they were able to get provincial nomination from New Brunswick so that's New Brunswick Newfoundland and Labrador you have to search for a job in Newfoundland and Labrador and it's not easy getting a job offer from outside Canada but you can still try that's one of their requirements for um, getting a provincial nomination which other province have i not talked about again i can't remember but anyway generally is this, this is a summary of most of the provincial nomination programs um and most of them require job offers except ontario saskatchewan and for now during this period for now um, because of covid19 it's only ontario and saskatchewan that are still giving provincial nominations to people outside of canada so that's the pnp in summary now the other option of immigrating is the aipp and the rnip i've talked about it several times on this channel rnip i've actually done videos on almost all of the communities yeah i've done videos on all of, almost all of them not all of them have started um, actually giving recommendations but so far thunder bay has actually given 32 recommendations and of course the first thing you have to do is to search for a job and i've done several videos on that in this channel the next one is aipp i've talked about aipp as well aipp they are basically looking for nurses and information technology people and low skilled workers like truck drivers and all that but of course you know it's not easy getting a truck driving job from outside canada so, and the first thing you are supposed to do is actually to search for a job because that's the major requirement 
for these pilot programs is to search for a job. So that's summary of AIPP and RNIP. Now the next option, if you know that you cannot go through the federal skilled workers, you cannot go through the federal skilled trades, you cannot go through the Canadian experience class, you cannot get go through the provincial nomination programs, you cannot go through AIPP, you cannot go through RNIP. The next option is through education. So if you have the money, yes, if you have the money to sponsor yourself, to come and do maybe a master's or a postgraduate diploma in Canada, then you start looking at this option as well. But of course, I've talked about it several times on this channel that um, these days it's quite difficult getting a study permit, especially from African countries because of the abuse of people who came before where they come to Canada as students and abandon their studies. So you won't blame <laughs> if if you have received a refusal, the first refusal, the second refusal, please just look for another option, you know, of immigrating. So that's it for education. I have also talked about visiting Canada, searching for a job, um, and then applying for a work permit. I've also talked about visiting Canada, doing some short-term courses that will help you get a job offer. With the job offer, you'll be eligible for a provincial nomination. I've given those options. I've also talked about the global talent stream. I talked about it. So almost all the options of immigrating, I've talked about them. And what I would encourage you to do is go through the videos. You will get more details because this is more or less like a summary of the options available. Now, the challenge is for people who are very matured when it comes to um, immigrating, like someone who is like 45 years, 46 years and are both still wanting to immigrate to Canada. For this group of people, it's quite difficult getting an option for them. Very, very difficult getting an option for them, except maybe they want to visit Canada, do a short term course that will help them get a job offer um from within canada you know so the thing is if you want to immigrate you should be able to know your options first and if you know you don't meet the requirements of maybe getting a master's degree and passing the language exams and even going further to start learning french because that's what i usually recommend to people when they say okay i've done this i've done this i've done this and it's like i'm not getting any headway i usually recommend to them start learning french because with french you have so many options for you you have options with quebec you have options with new brunswick you have options with ontario and you have options with manitoba so you have options with four provinces of getting um, provincial nominations from three provinces quebec is actually different totally different but you have an option with quebec as well so if you cannot pass the language exams if you cannot start learning french so that you can pass the language French language exam and get four options for you the next option is to search for a job because the other pathways requires searching for a job so you have to weigh your options is learning French and getting a very good French language score better or searching for a job is better if you feel that um, learning French is very difficult it's going to be very difficult for you then maybe searching for a job will be easier which of course is not easier getting a job from outside canada anyway i have talked too much <laughs> i don't i don't like talking too much but anytime i'm talking with you guys it's really, i just feel like just talking 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 anyway so these are the situations and this is this is what most people find themselves in and um if they cannot start learning french to have four options available for them the next option is to search for a job because most of the other immigration pathways requires a job search or if you have the money you come to canada to do a master's or a phd program or a one-year certificate program or if you have traveled extensively and you know you have access to canada you have a visiting visa then come with your visiting visa and network your way to searching for a job or do a short-term course that will be beneficial to you so these are most of the options except for the entrepreneurial path which i have entrepreneur and self-employed i've actually talked about it too for self-employed it's not when you say self-employed it's not you being um that you own a business and all that no their own understanding of self-employed is for people who are artists like yeah 
people who are artists and I've done a video of self-employed people so except you are an entrepreneur and you just tell yourself you know what there's no point going through these hoops of um, express entry blah 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 let me just come and establish a business that means yourself your net worth should be more like five hundred thousand dollars or one million dollars yes if you have a net worth of five hundred thousand dollars one million dollars or hundred thousand dollars in fact quebec has the cheapest entrepreneurial pathway but the requirement is that you must be bilingual if you are bilingual you have more chances if you're not bilingual it's very difficult for you to you know um go through the um quebec self-employed pathway so if you have the money if you know that yeah you, you don't all these other options are stressful for you just gather your money bring five hundred thousand dollars or have a net worth of five hundred thousand dollars and have an investment amount of let's say one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars you'll be able to come as an entrepreneur come and set up your business as a business person of course you have to be a business person in your home country you must have successfully managed the business for like two years three years for you to be even eligible for that as well so that option is also there and then the owner operator option which i've not actually talked about and the startup visa which i've not talked about so please bear with me i'll have to do extensive research for owner operator and startup visa which i've actually started but you know other commitments are actually taking my time that's why i've not been able to create a video on this ones so before you send me an email this is a summary of almost almost all the immigration options i don't know if i've covered all of them but this is just a summary of almost all the immigration options and for people who do not have a first degree um, it will be very difficult for you except you want to start searching for a job searching for low skilled jobs um, in the agricultural sector or um, in the construction sector those ones you can get job offers from outside canada but you have to be very careful so that you don't fall um, victim of fraudsters who pretend to give job offers okay so that reminds me um last week i actually shared something on the canada info hub instagram page which i will also share on this page as well and it's actually an employment advisor who is connecting anybody who plans to immigrate to sudbury i did i posted that on the instagram page and i feel that it will be cheating if i don't talk about it on this video so i would also post the details on the description box of this video and if you're interested please send your canadian resume to her basically she will connect people who are looking for jobs to potential employers in sudbury and sudbury is one of the um, communities chosen for the rural and northern immigration pilot so if you are interested check the description box of this video and you will see the information about the lady who is connecting people to employers in Sudbury. So this is the information I want to share today. I have talked too much and hopefully on Saturday I will come on live. I will tell you the time I will come on live and I'm hoping that I have to, I will see you guys and chat with you guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.